Yes, this is my disclaimer, guys. Any artist that I say, just infer that I love their entire albums. I've missed a lot of songs and I'll probably change the list next week. So don't attack me, please. Hey Team Vogue, this is Conan Gray and this is Playlist of My Life. My first song is Ribs by Lord. This song changed my life forever. This album changed my life forever. I think there's just something about this song, the way that it kind of captures this fear and apprehension, but also excitement of growing up. I think also this song showcases all the things that I love about Lord. The music is so, so succinct and everything she says is very, very personal yet very effective. And I could go on about her forever and ever and ever. And nobody wants to hear that except for me. It feels so scary getting old. I think the lyricism of, of Ribs in particular is so interesting because it's very, very repetitive. You know, she just repeats kind of over and over, like, it feels so scary getting old, it feels so scary getting old. And that, that's how it feels, you know? You're like, oh God, it's horrifying getting older. And then you just keep getting older. It's like, it just, <laughs> just never stops. Also, Lord does this thing that, that I think like really, really, I, I find so special. She kind of like stacks these vocals. And makes her own synth with her vocals. And that's something I did kind of very, in the very beginning of me making music. I didn't really play synth, so I just made harmonies with my voice. And, and I feel like that's something that I, you know, kind of learned from, from her. She, she knows how to kind of use her voice in such special ways. and. I'm an absolute nerd for her and I, I love her so much, it hurts. My fans are gonna attack me for this because they're like, you say this in every interview. My second song is Style by Taylor Swift. You got that jeans, day, day, dream, look in your eyes. <gasps> I can't even look at the camera because I can already tell what the comments are gonna be like. Of course it is, Conan. But of course it is. What am I supposed to say? Am I supposed to lie? If I could, I would put Taylor's entire discography on this playlist of my life. My Spotify wrapped was just 10 Taylor songs. I'm choosing style because I love the song. I, I think something about the movement and, and the beat and the way it's just so simple yet so complicated is something that I just, I'm constantly kind of looking towards as, as um, I guess just a, a goal of mine. She just did such a good job at telling the story in such a catchy way. I think that's what Taylor does so well. She can tell an entire story with just a few lines. When this album came out, I bought the album, I bought 1989 for my sister, I bought the Target exclusive version for my sister. I mean, I remember like playing this song in her Saturn, she blasted, it would destroy the speakers. <laughs> and it was just such a religious experience. I remember just wishing I could write a song like that one day. Next is the song Masterpiece by Big Thief. I'm a huge, 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 Big Thief fan, all of their music and all of Adrian Lenker's kind of solo music as well. I'm just constantly so impressed by the songwriting and by how they're able to tell this very, very, very descriptive emotion with such almost kind of gross words at times. This place smells like piss and beer. Can you get me out? And you're like, yeah, it does smell like piss and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of here. But also that song really reminds me so much of, of Texas and of my hometown and of my best friend, Ashley. It starts with like, years, days, makes no difference to me, babe. You look exactly the same to me. Years, days, makes no difference to me, babe. That's how I feel about my best friend. So much has changed since we became friends in the seventh grade. She still looks exactly the same to me and I still look exactly the same to her and there's just so much beauty in that song. Like thinking about it makes you want to cry. Next is Daydreamer by Adele. Daydreamer, sitting on the sea. This song was the song that actually made me start songwriting. Adele kind of 
painted this picture of this person so beautifully in, in a way that I'd never really known before. And it was the first time that I remember I was really affected by, <laughs> by a song, which sounds weird, but I was, I was 12, so leave me alone. It's actually really hard to write an Adele song, but I thought I could do it at 12, and I tried over and over and over and over and over, and I haven't stopped since. You can find him sitting on your doorstep. The melodies and, and the way that she can carry an emotion with like the texture of her voice is just so great, and I love her. I'd heard, I think from some interview or something, that Adele had been discovered on MySpace, and uh, MySpace wasn't really a thing when I, I was like kind of from a different generation, so I was like, oh, maybe, I'll, like, maybe like, I can write music, maybe someone will hear it or something, but it seemed really far-fetched, but it actually did end up happening somehow. I don't know how. I'm very skeptical. My next song is Doses and Mimosas by Cherub. <laughs> I'm putting this song on this list because one, this list is so serious. It's like, doesn't need to be this serious, but I took this really seriously because this is like a really hard question to ask. But also uh, this song actually did have quite a big effect on me. I discovered it, I learned about its existence in the boys locker room when I was 14 years old. Terrible, terrible times. But this boy who had the locker next to me, um, I hope he doesn't see this interview. He was foul. He actually had great taste in music <laughs> and would always play the music in the locker room. And I remember someone had turned off all the lights in the locker room and there was no window, so we couldn't see anything. And I was like hobbling, I was like trying to find a way to not be pantsed because that was what would happen in the locker rooms. Like, not okay, not okay. But I was like climbing on top of a, lo a locker trying to like hide so that no one would pants me. And Doses and Mimosas was playing. <laughs> I think it's the kind of song that just kind of like reminds me not to take life too seriously. Like, if you hate me, that's fine. That's totally fine. I hate you too. It's not a big deal. Like, it's really not that serious. It reminds me that nothing matters. Nothing matters ever. And you're just gonna, you're just gonna burn into nothingness in the universe eventually. You can try so hard to matter. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> Next is Fake Plastic Trees by Radiohead. Radiohead really inspired a lot of my songwriting, especially when I was working on my debut album, Kid Crow. It was very, 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 very lonely. I was deeply, deeply lonely, <laughs> like the loneliest I'd ever felt in my life. I'd started touring and I'd never toured before. I wasn't in school anymore, so I'd like go on tour for like four months and then come back and I, had, I would have no friends at all. I'd, Zero friends, because everyone else in college has a life. You know, they gotta go to college parties, they gotta go to class. When you leave for tour for four months, no one cares. So I would listen to Radiohead on repeat and walk around on campus like I was in a movie scene. I wasn't. But it really provided me a lot of comfort at that time. And um, I think Kid Crow was an album all about loneliness and all about kind of feeling like you couldn't relate to anyone. And a lot of Radiohead songs have this kind of feeling of I guess isolation, but also feeling kind of disjointed from things. A lot, a lot of chords are very kind of make you feel uncomfortable. Like Next up is a song called Slow Burn by Casey Musgraves. I'm all right with a slow burn. This song is kind of my comfort song. It's the song I listen to when life is moving way too fast. I am really, 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 really hard on myself. I make like a single mistake and I'm like, how dare you? You suck, you're worthless. And this song is just kind of about <laughs> like letting yourself take things slow. Ever since I was little, I've always felt like I have to just move like 10 million miles an hour and, and be the most successful person on earth by the time I'm 14. And life's not like that. This song's kind of just like, it's fine. Life can be a slow burn, everything's fine. Born in a hurry, always late. Haven't been early since 88. I think this song kind of has like similar remind reminders as like Vienna by Billy Joel. It's like, take it slow, kid. Everything's gonna be fine. Next is Smoke Signals by Phoebe Bridgers. Ooh, you must have been looking for me. 
I listened to this entire album and Phoebe's new album obsessively, but this album in particular and this song I listened to so, 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 so much when I was kind of first moving to college. I was so scared of everything. So I listened to a lot of the same music over and over. I'm kind of that way anyways with music. If I like a song, I'll just listen to it for years and kind of just listen to the same like 10 songs over and over. This is definitely a big comfort song. I think there's something really special about how Phoebe kind of writes in this very, very descriptive, personal way, but also a lot of time like the metaphors have like a bit of comedy in them at times too, which I really like. There's a lyric that's um, basically says like, I didn't know you then, and I'll never understand why it feels like I did. And I feel that way so much about people when it comes to people that I've loved or, or my friends even, I'll look at them and it's hard for me to even believe that there was a time when they weren't in my life. One of your eyes is always half shut. Something happened when you were a kid. I think all those little personal details are what make songs special to me. Next is Drew Barrymore by SZA. I get so lonely, I forget where I'm worth. This was a song that kind of made me discover SZA, so it always will have a special place in my heart. This song is so special. I think it showcases everything that's special about SZA. I think that SZA truly, truly is one of the best songwriters of our entire generation. I listened to SZA so much when I first moved from my hometown. I'm in this very, very scary time of my life that I couldn't listen to SZA for years <laughs> because any time a SZA song would come on, I'd be like, ah, please turn off, please turn off. Because it just reminded me of like this terrifying time in my life where I had no idea what was going on. But then now that it's been long enough, <laughs> these songs are just so beautiful. Why is it so hard to accept the party is over? It's like you're having a conversation with her, the way that she writes, it's just so special. And this song, I think has all of the feelings of insecurity that I've felt my entire life kind of packed into to this song in particular. I think that this playlist in my life, it's very general. If there's any songs that I'm missing, please spare me. I'm trying my best. Thank you so much, Team Vogue. That was my playlist of my life. Be sure to check out my music and my album, Kid Crow, and bye, take care.